so 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 this topic of 18 items of knowledge it is a very important topic in order to develop ourselves in for advancement in krishna consciousness or for advancement in spiritual life <clears throat> so first and this is from bhagavad gita 13 chapter text number 8 to 12 so i will first recite the verse and then along with me after i recite one line you will recite you will repeat that line so in that way we will recite the verse for that i will share the screen so you can see the shloka on the screen are all of you able to see the screen the shloka are you able to see the shloka please respond hari krishna prabhu ji yes yes prabhu ji okay so this is a uh, uh, there are around, this is around 1 2 3 4 5 5 five shlokas are there together so we will first chant the entire shloka follow me and very nectarian verse what krishna is telling in bhagavad gita it's very eye opening shloka this is check can balance system by understanding this entire series of verses we can improve the quality of our spiritual life and we can become dear to krishna i will i will i will discuss in a series of classes this topic in one class it is not possible maybe at least three four classes will be required to discuss all these qualities <clears throat> so all of you can repeat after me amanitvamadham vitvam please unmute yourself and chant after me amanitvam adham vitvam amanitvam adham vitvam ahimsa shantir arjavam ahimsa shantir arjavam arjavam acharya upasanam saucham acharya upasanam saucham sthairyam atma vinigraha sthairyam atma vinigraha i would like to request all the participants to chant after me just by chanting these verses of bhagavad gita we can purify ourselves and get the mercy of the lord indriyayartheshu vairagyam indriyayartheshu indriyayartheshu vairagyam an ahankara evacha an ahankara evacha janma mrittu jara vyadhi जन्म मृत्यु जरा व्याधि दुख दोषानु दर्शनम दुख दोषानु दर्शनम आसक्तिरन विस्वंगा 
आसक्ति रंग पुत्रदार गृहादिशु पुत्रदार गृहादिशु नित्यम च नित्यम च समचितिष्टानिष्टो पापास्तिषु निष्ठानिष्टो पापास्तिषु मयि च अनन्न योगेना मयि च अनन्न योगेना भक्तिर अव्यभिचारिनी आध्यात्म ज्ञान निवस्तम ज्ञानामिति प्रोक्तम् ज्ञानामिति प्रोक्तम् अज्ञानम यद अतोयन्यथा Okay, so now we will see the translation. It's a huge translation. Please be very careful. I think all of you are able to see right on your screen. Please respond. Yes, Prabhuji. Yes, Prabhu. Humility, pridelessness, non-violence, tolerance, simplicity, approaching a bona fide spiritual master, cleanliness, steadiness, self-control, renunciation of the objects of sense gratification. <clears throat> Absence of false ego, the perception of the evil of birth, death, old age, and disease, <clears throat> detachment, freedom from the entanglement with children, wife, home, and the rest, even mindedness amid pleasant and unpleasant events constant and unalloyed devotion to me, aspiring to live in a solitary place, detachment from the general mass of people, accepting the importance of self-realization and philosophical search for the absolute truth, all these I declare to be knowledge. And besides this, whatever there may be is ignorance. So, okay, let me. Okay. Hare Krishna. So we can see it's such a long purport, so, uh, long uh, translation, long verses, series of verses, long purports, long translation, and long purports. I think all of you are comfortable with English. So I can, I think, speak English. Yes, bro. Right. Thirteen point eight to twelve. Okay. Thirteenth chapter of Bhagavad Gita. Okay. 
so so first <clears throat> okay let us uh, start with mangala charan prayer om gyanam timirandhasya gyana jana shalakaya chakshur militam jena tasmai sri gurave namaha shri chaitanya manohishtam stapitam jena bhutale स्वयं रूप कदामय हम ददाति स्वपदांतिकम वंदे अहम श्री गुरु श्री चुत पद कमलम श्री गुरुन वैष्णवाम सा श्री रूपम सागर जातम सहगन रघुनाथ नितम तम सजीवम साद्वैतम सावधूतम परिजना सहितम कृष्ण चैतन्य देवम श्री राधा कृष्ण पादान सहगना ललिता श्री विशाखान्ता नम ओं विष्णुपदाय कृष्ण पृष्ठा भूतले श्रीमते भक्ति वेदात स्वामी नमिनी नमस्ते सरस्वती देव गौरवाणी प्रचारिणे निर्विशेष शून्यवादी पाश्चात्यदेशिणी नमो महाबदन्याय कृष्ण प्रेम प्रदायते कृष्णाय कृष्ण चैतन्य नाम गौरतिशे नमो नम हे कृष्ण करुणा सिंधु दीन बंधु जगत पते गोपीश गोपिका कांतराध कांत नमस्तुति तप्त कांचन गौरांगी श्री राधे वृंदावनेश्वरी वृषभानुश्रुते देवी प्रणमा हरि प्रे नीलाचल निवासा निय परमात्मने बलभद्र सुभद्राभ्यं जगन्नाथाय ते नम वाकूभ्य कृपा सिंधु पतिता पावनेभ्यो वैष्णवेभ्यो नमो नम जय श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु निनंद श्री अद्वैत गदाधर शिवा सदि गौर भक्त वृंद हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे मूकं करोति वाचाल पंगुंगुल घयते गिरी यदा तम हम वंदे श्री गुरु दिनता श्री चैतन्य परमानंदमाधव नमो विष्णु पदाय कृष्ण पृष्ठा भूतले Hare Krishna. So first we will discuss, and then we will have question answer. <clears throat> so here Krishna lists the qualities the human being should develop. Krishna is telling that this is very crystal clear. What is knowledge? what are the symptom of knowledge and what are the symptoms of ignorance when we know that what are the symptoms of knowledge then we can easily understand that what are the symptoms the opposite the absence of these qualities are the symptoms of ignorance now so this this is a clear line which krishna is drawing here many times we consider such and such people to be really good really knowledgeable such and such person to be you know very extraordinary <clears throat> but <clears throat> here krishna is clearly defining what are the symptoms of knowledge when one 
does not have these qualities, that means he is in ignorance. He may be a PhD or she may be a PhD or he may be a DSC, maybe doctor, engineer, or so-called spiritualist, Nobel winner, Oscar winner, whoever may be, is in ignorance. If they lack, they don't have these qualities. So today, we will discuss these three qualities, humility, pridelessness, <clears throat> and absence of false ego. So these three qualities we will discuss today. And then we will have a bit question answer. So, <clears throat> Krishna tells in Bhagavad Gita Krishna tells in Bhagavad Gita Vidya Vinay Sampanne Brahmani Govi Hastini Suni Chaiva Sapakecha Pandita Samadarshina. The real Vidya, the real education should bring Binoy, humility, pridelessness, and absence of false ego. So, what is Vidya? So Vidya means, Vidya or education does not mean which helps us to earn our livelihood. A person who is not educated can also earn his livelihood. The animals are also earning their livelihood. The animals, they also have shelter. They also have defense mechanism. They also eat. They also store. They also produce byproducts or offsprings. <clears throat> so if our so-called education of school, college, and universities are simply utilized to do these four activities of eating, sleeping, mating, and depending as sophisticatedly as possible, then that education is not education, real education. That education is simply making us two-legged animals. So the real education is a education and training about our original identity, about our original life. The real education the material education in simply inspired the head. But the real education inspires the heart. So the materialistic education make people simply degree holder animals. But the real education, the spiritual education, make ourselves human beings. So here, 
the first quality or the first symptom of knowledge or vidya is humility and pridelessness and absence of false ego vidya vinay sobhate so now what is humility <clears throat> so prabhupad is writing in this purport about humility prabhupad is writing humility means one should not be anxious to have the satisfaction of being honored by others that's what prabhupad is writing humility means again i repeat humility means one should not be anxious to have the satisfaction of being honored by others okay so i will discuss in various aspects <clears throat> if we are not humble we cannot run our life happily now there are various aspects of humility you see in this world any system works because of humility of people and that is forced humility that humility is not coming from the heart in our office the employees they are showing humility in front of the boss or their manager or they are in charge folding their palms giving them respect but that is forced humility that is that is artificial humility and going after that going at the back and speaking nonsense or speaking ill about that person so therefore that humility is forced humility but you see in order to maintain our job secure means in maintain our job security in order to maintain our image nice image in front of my manager or in charge or hod i am acting humbly though i have lot of grudges i have lot of dissatisfaction so just to earn just to have some paper notes we are forced to be humble even though we don't want to then in order to earn the mercy of the lord how much humble we should be genuinely and this forced humility what will have to be humble by the pressure of the circumstances by the pressure of the time so one time one person came to see prabhupada and the person who brought this person he offered obeisances in front of shila prabhupad prostrate obeisances dandavat pranam so then this person requested this newcomer that you also please give obeisances to our spiritual master so this person this newcomer told 
Why should I bow down to a man? So then, later Prabhupada told that we don't want to bow down before the Lord and his representative, but we will be forced to bow down by the power of time. So, therefore, without being humble, we cannot function in our daily life. In the relationship of husband and wife, if no one is humble, if both are full of false ego, full of pride, and full of arrogance, then what will happen? They will fight and they will separate. So in any relationship, any bonding, any society, humility is compulsory. But that humility is artificial humility. So in order to, so when we go to a teacher and if we, if we are not humble, if we are not, if we are not humbling ourselves before the teacher, Will we be able to learn the subject matter if we think always, hey, kya bakwas para raha hai? Time pass kar raha hai. Isse to achcha main, main kitab kul ke par lunga. We can never learn the subject matter from that teacher with such kind of attitude. Never learn the subject matter with such kind of attitude. In our Shastra, there is very famous words, Shodhavan Lavate Jnanam. Those who are having Shodha, that means little faith. With that little faith, one comes to learn. They can learn. But if one does not have Shodha, or faith, then how can they learn? How can he or she learn? So this, the result of that faith is humility and pridelessness. And therefore Krishna tells in Bhagavad, you see, in the battlefield of Kurukshetra, when the war was about to begin, Arjuna blew the conch shell, Krishna blew the conch shell. And then Arjuna is telling that, I can't fight. Why should I fight with my superiors who are worthy of my worship? I don't want to enjoy the treasures which will be tainted with the bloods of my superior. And Arjuna was giving logic after logic. Then after some time, Arjuna got completely confused. Arjuna got completely bewildered. And then Arjuna is saying, Karpona dosha upahata sabhava pricchamitam dharma sammoda cheta now Arjuna was giving big, big logic. And while giving big, big logic, Arjuna became completely confused. Then Arjuna surrendered to Krishna. The O Krishna, I am now completely confused about my duty. I am surrendering to you and whatever is best for me, kindly tell. You are no more my friend. 
I am Sisustayaham. I am your disciple. You are my spiritual master. Kindly, you give the direction. So this is the attitude with which we should learn the science of Bhagavad Gita, Srimad Bhagavatam, or Krishna consciousness. So, so there are two students came to learn Mridanga to a teacher. So the, the students asked, the, so these two, out of these two students, one student used to know some uh, little bit Mridanga, some bits of Mridanga. And another student, he did not know anything. So this teacher, so this, uh, the student, which, or who did not know anything for, of Madanga, when he asked that Gurudev, what will be our, what will be my charge? So then the, the, the teacher told, your charge is 50 rupees. And the student, who used to know a little bit, he was thinking that definitely my charge will be 25 rupees. <laughs> right? So then the second student, who used to know a little bit, when he asked the teacher, so my dear teacher, what will be my charge? Or how much will I have to pay you? So then the teacher told, your charge is 100 rupees. The second student got completely taken aback. Now, I know already a little bit some Radanga bits. This person, this fellow, my, this, this my friend, he does not know anything. He is getting charged 50 rupees. And I am charged, I'm getting charged double. Why? So then the spiritual master told that, or the teacher told. Because you know something. So therefore, I will have to put my lot of endeavor upon you to make you forget those lessons. And then I will have to teach you the new bits, the new proper Mridanga bits. But this, your friend, who does not know anything, I will not have to make him forget what he knows. He does not know anything. So I will not have to put double endeavor on him to teach him the Mridanga beats. So therefore, you know, so it becomes very difficult when we have the false ego, when we have the pride, and we think that I know something from the very beginning of the childhood. You know, I have learned these, 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 these things. I have also knowledge. I also know Gita. But 99% time we have seen that people, they don't have any understanding of Gita. Very superficial. And therefore, Due to that presence of false ego, they find very difficult to learn the actual science of Bhagavad Gita. When we have the false ego, that no matter whatever this, you no, know, no matter whatever these people say, I will follow my path only then he or she cannot, will not be able to take the message of Gita in the heart. Because the process is shown by Arjuna. Arjuna completely surrendered to Krishna. That Krishna, I'm completely bewildered. I cannot understand what is good for me, what is bad for me. Let you become my teacher. And that's what Krishna is telling. This is a process of gaining the spiritual wisdom. What is that? 
तद्विधि प्रोनिपात है ना पूरी प्रश्ने ना सेवाया उपदेशन की ते ज्ञानम ज्ञानी ना तत्व दर्शिना that you will have to approach a bona fide spiritual master and then you will have to surrender unto him then you will have to render service unto him and then you will have to ask questions in confidence and then that tatvadarshi guru who has seen the absolute truth will impart this wisdom unto you so how will one be able to surrender serve if one does not have humility to the degree one is proud to the degree one is maintaining the false ego that whatever i understand that is best there can be nothing above it to that degree one will not be able to receive or to that degree the divine knowledge will be covered from him or her and that's why in a guru puja song written by narottam das thakur there he is writing the dibbo gyan ride prakashita this divine knowledge get transform get get manifested or get revealed in the heart of the living entity so to the degree our heart is filled with false ego pride to that degree it will not be possible for the divine wisdom to reveal to us so what northam das thakur is writing प्रेम भक्ति जहा होते अविद्या विनाश हो जाते सो वेन दिस डार्कनेस ऑफ इग्नोरेंस विल बी कंप्लीटली डिस्पेल्ड ड्यू टू परफॉर्मेंस ऑफ लविंग डिवोशनल सर्विस टू द लॉर्ड देन दिव्य ज्ञान हृदय प्रकाशित then the divine knowledge will be manifested in the heart but due to a presence of the false ego due to presence of the pride we don't want to surrender to the lord and his bona fide representative we are surrendering ourselves to the dog to our pet dog we are surrendering ourselves to the political leaders we are surrendering ourselves to our customers if we are businessman we are surrendering ourselves to our wife children husband we are surrendering ourselves to my in charge in the office we are we are forced to surrender we are forced to serve our position is to serve but our original position is to serve the supreme lord when we our original position is to surrender to the supreme lord but due to the presence of ignorance due to the lack of knowledge about the science of god consciousness due to the presence of false ego and pride we are ready to surrender to anyone and everyone in this world except the supreme lord so therefore we can see that how in order to receive the divine knowledge in order to have the realization of the self and the supreme lord 
how humility is so important. The king of the entire world, Parikshit Maharaj, he was the king of the entire world. Parikshit Maharaj went for hunting in the forest one day and he felt very thirsty. He went to a nearby Rishi's cottage. There the Shamik Rishi was doing, was completely in trance in meditation. So when the king of the entire world came to the door of this Rishi, this Rishi was completely silent. This Rishi could not receive Parikshit Maharaj. And Parikshit Maharaj became angry at that moment. And there was a dead snake lying there. Parikshit Maharaj lifted that dead snake and put that dead snake round the neck of this Rishi. And then Parikshit Maharaj left that place. After some time, the son of this saintly person came there, Shringi, and saw that someone has put the dead snake upon my father's neck, around my father's neck. So Shringi became very angry. Shringi immediately took the water in the hand and pronounced the curse that whoever have put this dead snake around my father's snake within the seven days at the seventh day from today will be bitten by the taksha snake to giant. Will be bitten to death by the taksha snake. Sringi pronounced the curse and Samik Rishi came out of the trance and immediately scolded this Sringi. Why did you pronounce the curse? It was not appropriate. It was Maharaj Parikshit who came, who is a protector of dharma. You have done a great mistake. So when Parikshit Maharaj came to know about this curse, Parikshit Maharaj immediately repented for the mistakes he committed. And then Parikshit Maharaj thought that I have received a special mercy of the Lord that I have come to know when I am going to die. Parikshit Maharaj handed over all the responsibility of the kingdom of the entire world to his son Janmejai and left the palace, went to the banks of Ganges and in the bank of the Ganges, hundreds and thousands of saintly persons were sitting. Parikshit Maharaj went and surrendered unto their lotus feet and asked the question that what is the duty of a person who is going to die within seven days. So there arrived great saintly person, Sukhdev Goswami, who was coronated as the topmost of all the saintly person in the Simhasan. And then Parikshit Maharaj surrendered unto him and accepted him as a spiritual master and asked the question and there Sukhdev Goswami recited the entire Srimad Bhagavatam. So now Prabhupada is writing in the purport that Parikshit Maharaj was a pure devotee of the Lord. Parikshit Maharaj cannot insult 
a saintly person like what he has done. It was not done, it was not done intentionally by Parikshit Maharaj. Because Parikshit Maharaj was a pure devotee who saw Krishna when he was present in the womb of Uttara, Aswatthama, through Brahmastra in order to destroy the womb of Uttara. At that time, Uttara took shelter of Krishna and Krishna protected Parikshit Maharaj by his Sudarshan Chakra. And Parikshit Maharaj in the womb saw Sudarshan Chakra, saw Krishna. So Parikshit Maharaj was a pure devotee. Then how could this act be done by him? How could this act of insulting the saintly person done by him? So Prabhupada writes in the purport, based on the purports of the great Acharyas, like Vishnu Chakravarti Thakur and all, that this was simply the arrangement of the Supreme Lord. Due to this arrangement of the Supreme Lord, Parikshit Maharaj left everything and went to the bank of the Ganges in order to receive Srimad Bhagavatam. Similarly, and therefore we are able to get this message of Srimad Bhagavatam. Similarly, Arjuna is a pure devotee of the Lord. Otherwise, how could Arjuna have such a thick friendship with Krishna? And how Krishna's pure devotee Arjuna could be bewildered in the battlefield before just the battle is going to, going to be started? So it was also the plan of Krishna. Krishna wanted to give the mercy to us, to give the message of Bhagavad Gita. Krishna made Arjuna like a calf. I told on 14th December regarding the significance or the glories of Bhagavad Gita, Gita Mahatmya. So, Parikshit Maharaj expressed his complete humility. Parikshit Maharaj did not try to mitigate the curse of Sringi. Parikshit Maharaj, if Parikshit Maharaj want, if Parikshit Maharaj desired to handle the curse, he could do it. He was such a powerful king. And he was a pure devotee of the Lord. But Parikshit Maharaj simply accepted the curse of Sringi and converted that curse into blessings by his humble attitude that I have committed an offense to a saintly person. Therefore, I should suffer the consequences. But due to the mercy of the great saintly persons like Sukhdev Goswami, the entire curse got converted into blessings. And Parikshit Maharaj, seven days without eating, without sleeping, without drinking water. Parikshit Maharaj was completely filled, getting filled with the nectar of Krishna Katha. He was drinking Krishna Katha Amrit. And he could completely fix up his consciousness on the Supreme Lord while the Taksha snake bite him. But, so therefore, so dear devotees, so our spiritual advancement starts when we don't expect respect for us and we give respect to the devotees of the Lord. We humble ourselves before them. We submissively ask questions. 
Now, humility does not mean that you cannot, humility does not mean, does not mean cowardness. Very important to understand. Humility does not mean being a coward. Prabhupada tells us that the two greatest wars of the world were fought by the Vaishnavas. The war of Ramayana, the war of Mahabharata. The war of Ramayana was fought by the devotees of Lord Ramachandra and war of Mahabharata was fought and won by the devotees of Lord Krishna. So, humility does not mean that we simply artificially, you know, do some acting of being humble. No. Humility does not mean that whatever we are told, we will have to do it without asking any question. No, not like that. Parikshit Maharaj or Arjuna, while Arjuna was listening to the message of Bhagavad Gita by from Krishna, or when Parikshit Maharaj was hearing the message of Sukhdev Goswami, the message of Srimad Bhagavatam, then Parikshit Maharaj and Arjuna both were asking challenging questions to Sukhdev Goswami and to Krishna respectively. Amazing. But they were asking the question in respect. Respectfully. They were asking challenging questions but with respect. So, <clears throat> so humility means that we open ourselves. Let the other person who is guiding our, who is guiding us, let ourselves be at ourselves in front of him or her, in front of our spiritual master. There is no need to make artificially show off of ourselves in order to give a different impression about us, which actually we are not. That is not humility. Humility means to present ourselves as we are with respect. As I told you, Shraddhavan Lavatigana, one who does not have respect cannot learn or cannot earn the real knowledge. So, when now, so humility have, as I told, that it has several aspects in our spiritual life. If we are filled with pride, if we are filled with false ego, we will not be able to chant the holy name with taste. Surely, if we disrespect devotees, we will not be able to chant the holy name nicely. That's why Chaitanya Mahaprabhu says in his Sikshashtakam prayer that who can chant the holy name 24 hours? He tells, Srinadapi Suni Chena Tarorupi Shahishnuna. Omanina, Manadena, Kirtaniya Sadahari. So one who is not expecting respect for him or her, one who is ready to give respect to others, and one who is humbler than the blade of grass and more tolerant than the trees. He or she can chant the holy name constantly. 
this is a big science but that does not mean again that does not mean that we don't go in confrontation we go in confrontation in order to protect dharma just like as i told you that the pandavas the lord ramachandra they were all challenged by the people who were on the side of adharma and they fought in order to establish dharma similarly in the path of dharma when we are walking so then we will have to take the side of dharma and we will have to confront the principles of adharma and we will have to conquer over them by the power of our spiritual strength that is important that is humility to carry out our prescribed duty just like arjuna arjuna did not want to fight the battle arjuna told that i will become a beggar and i will go on begging and i will live my life krishna did not approve that krishna did not tell arjuna oh you are such a humble person krishna told that this is not humility krishna told that this is you will not be able to do it because this is not your dharma you are a kshatriya therefore your dharma is to fight when you are challenged and performing our duties according to our varnashrama system is also demonstration of humility so that means that many times you know people when they come to krishna consciousness and they feel a great sense of relief and they say that prabhu i want to quit family life i and i want to join with all of you and lead a full time life that is not humility you are escaping from your responsibility now in that sense what is the humble position in that sense the humility is understanding that how much i am degraded how much i am entangled in the entanglements of this world what is my misfortune that i could not come to krishna consciousness before when i was young or when i had time so that i could avoid this entanglement so therefore i am a fool number one now i am getting this opportunity okay now let me carry out my responsibilities offering them to krishna the results of performing these responsibilities i will offer to krishna that is humility accepting the reality is humility and if you are not ready to accept the reality then we are proud we are arrogant and this humility in the heart actually gets generated when we have the sense of gratitude within our heart kritagyata if we don't have the gratitude in our heart we can't humble ourselves before others so just like so when in the beginning time many people come in in the association of devotees many people come in contact with the devotees and they are very argumentative and the devotees they understand 
that this person is very argumentative, this person is very arrogant. So therefore the devotees, they feed him prasad, lot of prasad, they engage him in some services. And slowly, slowly, due to the impact of prasad, due to the impact of the holy name, due to the impact of the darshan of the deities, the person slowly, slowly starts feeling the sense of relief from the burning sensation of this material world from the three top clash. And then the more he realizes the power of the devotional service, the more he realizes the insignificant nature of ourself and the greatness of the Supreme Lord and his devotees, the more the spirit soul become humble. And this happens by what? When the sense of gratitude comes in our heart. Until, so therefore, gratitude is the mother, is the womb of humility. The sense of gratitude is the womb of humility. Until and unless we have kritagyata in our heart, we can't be humble in front of another person. If we have gratitude, so just like in the relationship, in the family relationship, how the sons and daughters, they become arrogant, how they behave rudely with their parents, how they, how, they, how they behave arrogantly with their parents. Because they don't have the sense of gratitude towards their parents. Therefore, they become, they act violently, they act arrogantly, they act rudely, because they are not taught in the, from the beginning of their life these qualities. And therefore, they can't be humble. At the passage of time, due to the association of the outside materialistic circles, the, our, son and our sons and daughters, they become arrogant. They become rude. They become proud. And they don't want to listen superiors. So therefore, the genuine humility comes out of the sense of gratitude. One is attending the class, yatras, with the devotees. But one is, not de one is not feeling that sense of gratitude towards the devotees, towards Srila Prabhupada, towards the Guru Parampara, that by their mercy, I am getting so much knowledge practically of Bhagavad Gita, I am getting the opportunity to serve Krishna by their mercy, by their association, by their inspiration. I am getting the opportunity to chant the holy name. I am getting the opportunity to taste Krishna Prasada. I am getting the opportunity to visit the holy dham. Thank you so much. So until and unless one is developing this much sense of gratitude, one, one's heart remains hard-hearted. And that hard-hearted heart, sorry, that, that heart which is like stone, which does not have the soft feeling of gratitude towards the Supreme Lord and his devotees, can't taste the holy name. And that heart cannot be stolen by Krishna. But when that stone-like heart becomes melted like butter due to the sense of gratitude, Oma Jnanam Timiram Dhasa Jnanam Jana Shalakaya Chakshurur Militam Jena Tasmai Sri Guru Benamaha Oh my dear spiritual master, I was born in the darkness of ignorance. My two eyes were completely covered, but you have 
switched on the torch of the spiritual knowledge and you have shown me the way of enlight the path of enlightenment so therefore i offer my respectful obeisances unto you so when one develop this sense of gratitude then one can be automatically humble and such a heart can chant the holy name with full taste humility means expressing ourselves to our superiors to our spiritual guides when our spiritual guides are giving us some direction some instructions and if we are within in within ourselves if we are thinking are bolna hai bolne do mere ko to pata hai mere ko kya karna hai ye 10 bar pehle bhi do bar ye sab baat bola hai ye phir bhi abhi bhi bol raha hai phar mein jaye duniya hum bajaye har bol so that person is filled with false ego that person is filled with pride such kind of heart cannot be softened and such kind of heart stone like heart cannot be melted or cannot be stolen by krishna and such kind of heart cannot cry for krishna in the holy name such kind of heart cannot chant the holy name with the taste but when we are receiving some instructions and we are facing some challenges to implement such instructions or guidance then we discuss opening our heart with our seniors or spiritual guide that prabhu this will be the challenges these are the challenges these were the challenges how to overcome it the purpose is not just to simply give excuse to not to do that but the purpose is how will i overcome the obstacles with the help of our spiritual guide and that is humility when we are when we are opening ourselves that is humility when we are allowing our superiors or our spiritual guides to help us that is humility that is pridelessness that is the absence of false ego we can see that how the chief minister the chief the the prime minister and the finance minister in the government of nawab husain shah the prime minister of the prime minister was sanatan goswami sakar malik and the and the uh, finance minister was dabir khas who later became rupa goswami when lord chaitanya mahaprabhu came to ram kheli they took the straw in the in in between their teeth and they fell down at the feet of shri chaitanya mahaprabhu and they expressed themselves ke ami kano more jare tapotroy i don't know who am i i don't know why am i suffering in the scorching heat of this material existence apnar hitahit gyan kichu nahi jani gramma byabohare kahe pandit shotto kori mani they are saying that we don't know what is good for us what is best for us and these village people they are they tell us that we are like pandit and we are such rascal we are such fool that we consider their bahava their words to be true satya kori mani so then lord chaitanya mahaprabhu is telling that oh these two brothers please get up your humility is breaking my heart and they were very learned scholars they were born in saraswat brahman family they were scholars in sanskrit they were scholars in shastra but due to the 
situation they got converted to uh, act as Mohammedan rulers under the dictatorship of Nabab Hussein Shah. So such great souls, they are demonstrating that how to surrender to the Supreme Lord with humility. And we can see that how so real humility is to follow the instruction of the Supreme Lord and his bona fide representative. When Krishna told Yudhishthir Maharaj, go and tell Dronacharya that Aswatthama is dead. Yudhishthir Maharaj, who never spoke lie in his life, he thought that how can I speak the lie? He went and told Dronacharya, Aswatthama Hata, but this is an elephant. So this is not humility. So this is the this is a dharma. The real dharma, the real humility is to follow the code of conduct given by the Supreme Lord. If the Lord tells us to tell lie, then that is dharma. Because the definition of dharma is dharman to shakshat bhagavat pranitam. Religion is simply the code of conduct given by the Supreme Lord. Yudhishthir Maharaj chariot used to, used to always run above the ground. But when Yudhishthir Maharaj spoke the so-called truth, immediately Yudhishthir Maharaj chariot touched the ground, which demonstrated that Yudhishthir Maharaj deviated from the path of dharma by disobeying the instruction of Krishna. Partly. That is not humility. Humility is to surrender to the instruction of the Supreme Lord. That is humility. We can see that this Mayavadi people, Nirvisheshvadi people, or even the materialistic people they demonstrate a lot of humility. Even sometimes we see absence of such kind of humility even in the devotees. How to understand that? Very important point. You see, you know, one time Prabhupada, the initiation ceremony was happening and, and these Western disciples they did not properly arrange the paraphernalia of Yajna. So Prabhupada was being, becoming angry because time was passing. Prabhupada would have to catch flight to go to another city to preach. Prabhupada had programs. And Prabhupada was becoming angry. And there was one hippie. You all know what, no, uh, you all know what is the meaning of hippie. So Prabhupada was so Prabhupada was becoming angry and this a hippie told Prabhupada that Swamiji, why are you becoming angry? Chant Hare Krishna. <laughs> right? So, so how to understand that? See, a devotee become angry when the service to the Lord and his bona fide representative gets hampered. That anger is completely justified. Arjuna, Krishna told Arjuna to utilize his anger in the fight to establish dharma. So when our anger is for not getting the service of the Supreme Lord done properly, then that is well justified. Whether that person or that devotee is getting angry because he is not getting respect, then that is not humility. If the service of the Lord is getting hampered and if the devotee is getting angry, 
then that is not the violation of humility. On the contrary, the Mayabadis, Birviseshbadis, the so-called Bhadralo gentleman, so-called the hardcore materialistic people, they artificially imitate or they artificially behave very gently or humbly. But because they are devoid of God consciousness, all their qualities are simply a temporary show of business. That's all. And that's what Srimad Bhagavatam is telling. Srimad Bhagavatam is telling Jashasti Bhaktir Bhagavati Akinchana Sarvair Gunes Tatra Samasita Suraha Harabho Abhaktasya Uto Mahatguna Manorathena Satidhavato Vahi. So Bhagavatam is telling that. that a devotee who is surrendered to the Supreme Lord, all the good qualities of demigods, all the good qualities will be manifested, all the genuinely, all the good qualities will be manifested genuinely, like that of demigods in their life, in their character, in the life of a devotee over a period of time, if he practiced devotional service, but on the contrary, harabho, harabho abhaktasya. If one is not a devotee of the Lord, even if he's a Nobel Prize winner, even if he's a good writer, even if he's a good singer, even if he's a good scientist, even if he's a good poet, even if he's a good politician, harabho abhaktasya. Kuto Mahat Guna, what, get, what great qualities one is having. Very soon, all his good qualities will be doomed. Why? Because he is simply riding the chariot of mind and hovering through the different planetary systems. Manorathena Satidhavato Vahi, uncontrollably. He is moving from species to species in 84 lakh different species of life, riding on the chariot of mind. So therefore, we need to understand humility in such a large aspect. So therefore, to the degree we are genuinely humble out of the sense of gratitude towards the Supreme Lord and his devotees, for this precious gift of Krishna consciousness, to that degree, we will be able to progress. We, to that degree, our heart will be softened. And to that degree, we will be able to chant the holy name with taste. So here I end today. I discussed quite a lot, almost one hour or more than that. So now, I would like to ask if you have any question. Hare Krishna. Do you have any question from today's discussion? Hare Krishna Prabhu, Dhanavad Pranam. Prabhu, humility is a very important thing. I don't know if I am a Vaishnav, I don't know if I am a general people, I don't know if I am a general people. जेटा फेस कोरी जे टॉक्सिक पीपल बा ऑफिस पॉलिटिक्स से जोन अनेक समय सेटा आसे ना बा एक ता उन्नो भाव तोड़ी हुई तो ये ह्यूमिलिटी 
ব্যাপারটা কি একটা পার্টিকুলার ক্যারেক্টার যে আমার মধ্যে বিদ্যমান থাকবে যেটা সকলের ক্ষেত্রে প্রযোজ্য হবে সেটা যদি প্রযোজ্য হয় তাহলে আমি ভক্তদের ক্ষেত্রে সেটা অ্যাপ্লাই করতে পারছি কিন্তু যখন ওই ডেঞ্জারাস বা টক্সিক পিপলদের সাথে কোনো কিছু ডিল করছি তখন আমি সেটা মেনটেন করতে পারি না সেটা ব্রেক করে তার মানে কি আমি এই ক্যারেক্টার থেকে বঞ্চিত হলাম ियलिस्टिक वर्ल्ड दिस मेटेरियल वर्ल्ड is a place of exploitation but the spiritual world is a place of service when some devotees are engaging ourselves in the devotional service of the lord they are not exploiting us though immaturely we think like that this is very unfortunate but this material world is a place of exploitation so you see that we will have to demonstrate certain level of humility in our working life and that's the training given in corporate life we can remember i can remember that when i was working in tcs in the initial learning program in the initial training program so they used to teach what is the meaning of a real learning they used to teach that first you will have to unlearn yourself that means whatever you have learned till now forget then relearn then you actually learn that uh, you know in the training they used to speak like this so without humility we cannot work in the outside world but when we are seeing that we are getting exploited out of a certain range then we will have to adopt some technique to escape that getting of becoming exploited by putting our intelligence but so but that does not mean in that case humility does not mean that we will go on getting exploited by others and what will be the result of that the result of that getting exploited will be fatalistic in our spiritual life because we will never be able to please the materialistic people no matter how much we serve them so therefore there is a limit therefore we will have to draw a line on that field that okay now let's say i'm giving example in our company life what we used to do what i used to do i used to i used to give my sincere effort and endeavor allocated 9 hours and when and full full concentrative work i used to do 9 hours and in it companies 9 work is a you know standard time now but in when there is requirement then i used to extend i used to like once or twice in a week i used i used to extend myself that well everybody is extending so let me also extend and many times 
people they used to go to office on saturday sundays but i never used to go on saturday sundays i told clearly i gave lot of excuses all those were false excuses in order to save myself of getting from getting exploited over exploited at the delivery time in software projects i'm telling in delivery time i used to work hard instead of 9 hours on an average week i used to work 11 hour 12 hours because in because this delivery time is really very crucial so we will have to be sincere at our work but at the same time we will have to save ourselves from getting overly exploited by others in that way we will have to keep a balance and our behavior defines our attitude and in working life attitude matters therefore it is it says it is in a, there is a proverb which says that it is not the aptitude but the attitude which determines the altitude right so you know many people they don't do much but by just oiling people you know just some you know do number idhar ka udhar udhar ke idhar karke wo manage karke wo apne aap ko dikha deta hai and they get good rating at the end of the year so we will have to be intelligent and we will have to maintain proper attitude we will have to sometime extend and sometimes we will have to save ourselves from getting overly exploited in that way we will have to maintain a balance and we will have to maintain our krishna conscious behavior and we will have to the more sincerely we practice our sadhana you know the less um less there is chance that we lose our control in our working place so we maintain good behavior many times we are provoked just like you know one time my manager told that you know pranob that uh, there was no work i mean it means not much work was there so i used to do those work i know that lot of time is there and they are unnecessarily creating pressure because by that time i became quite mature at the end of 2 years then my then my tech lead was telling me that you know you know why are you, you why are you making delay you know of delivery you know we have so many works i know that there are no works but these people these managers or this uh, hods they are they are like that that is their nature and so sometimes you know sometimes we will have to raise our facts it's not that humility means always he will go on dumping all the rubbish words on us and we will have to absorb them not like that sometimes we will have to raise our facts even we don't bite them but we raise our fan facts so immediately the one day i told you know that okay if if you feel that i am not you know i am not uh, working properly so then please release me from your project you will also be relieved i will also be relieved otherwise please let me do my work at my own pace immediately that person got sh shut down means shut up and sat quietly so therefore so therefore we will have to keep a balance in our behavior you know sometimes we we'll have to give the prasadam and let me tell you that these people you know who used to criticize me for being vegetarian or who who used to criticize me for being slow they used to serve me they used to bring fresh in, in the parties i never used to eat some outside cooked food 
So they used to bring fruits from me from the shopping mall. So point is that in that way, we will have to strike a balance. Okay? Yes, we got it. Thank you so much, Hare Krishna. Hare Bol. Any other question anybody is having? Hare Krishna, Prabhu. Yes, or in Prabhu. Prabhu, you told about the humility uh, and uh, you tell that um, we should uh, show our humility to the devotees, not the outsiders and sometimes we have to uh, not means that show the outsiders the humility and sometimes no, if we no, no, have, no, I did not uh, tell I, I did not tell that you we should not no see this demonstration of humility is not an artificial thing please try to understand if you chant Hare Krishna sincerely if you're reading Shul Prabhupada books, if you're reading Bhagavad Gita message or hearing the message of Bhagavad Gita, automatically this quality of humility will come to you. Automatically. Automatically you will become polite. <laughs> Actually, this was, I will let me tell you that, you know, I was a very arrogant person. I used to, you know, I, I used to be a very destructive person. And my family members were very much disturbed regarding me, regarding my destructive activities in my school days. They used to, you know, they used to become hopeless sometimes regarding me, regarding my destructive behavior, regarding my arrogance, regarding my quarreling nature, regarding my fighting nature. But when I started learning the message of Bhagavad Gita, when I started, when I started again and again, every day I I started hearing the message of Bhagavad Gita. You know, they, you know, they appreciated it. And they felt that, you know, I mean, I'm changing. You know, I'm changing. And they were feeling a sense of relief in regards to my behavior. Though at that time I did not start chanting also. I did not make devotees in a living encounter. I was only watching the Gita program from Juhu is gone in Atma, Atma serial in Star Plus. Just by every day listening to the message of Bhagavad Gita, every day, you know, cultivating the knowledge, some changes were coming. This is automatic. This will happen automatically. If we are in a receptive mode, if we are receiving the message of Bhagavad Gita sincerely, these changes will, these transformations will be visible. So it is not any artificial work to demonstrate humility. Jashyasti bhaktir bhagavati akinchana sarve gune tatra samasita sura. If one is sincere in chanting and hearing automatically the good qualities of the demigods will be developed in the life and character of devotees. Bolo. But sometimes we have to show the uh, humility artificially to the other people. Like when we uh, go to distribute the Bhagavad Gita, some people uh, tell us, oh, you have uh, bring the Bhagavad Gita, oh, it is useless. But we have to see, we, we have to show them the artificial humility. Is it good or is it bad, Prabhu? Because um, okay, give um, one example. Give one example again clearly. Just like when Prabhu, our Jaman Bhagavad Gita distribute करते गए थे, तो क्यों Bhagavad Gita माने ऐसे देख लो, तो बोलते हो Bhagavad Gita है ना जे, ऐसे तुम्हारे वो कंधे के धूप फूप आंते वाले धूप ऐसे नहीं कुल भालो, पर इस बार ने कहा था बोले तो चले जाते हैं ठीक है जी तो आमादे रखने तो नहीं भगवान ने समय धूप जलाना रखा जी मुझे ये तो धूप तो मारा नहीं तो भगवान की तो नहीं है ये किस कोई टाइप है आमादे तो देखा आज भी शेयर लियो किसी को सी हाँ सो मेनी पीपल विल कम एंड सेम मेनी थिंग्स नाउ इफ यू लूज टेम्पर इन Huh. So later, so this is this we will come. We will come another another side of the coin of humility is tolerance. 
So the another side of the coin of humility is tolerance. We need to tolerate people's various comments. We should not become agitated. You know, mm. different people will come and give different comments. If we become agitated by different comments, then we will, that will be our last day of going for book distribution. We will become frustrated, right? So rather, <laughs> rather, when we see the people with the eyes of knowledge, then we can understand their fallen condition. And we should try to help them in a compassionate way. That how unfortunate is this person that this person could not understand the, the, the significance of Bhagavad Gita. Let me try to preach to him. Excuse me, sir. Can I give you two minutes? So you appreciated our incense. You know, this incense will burn for a few minutes and then it will be gone. The fragrance will be gone. But this incense of Bhagavad Gita, if you, you know, if you, if you read it, then your heart, your consciousness, your mind will be will become fragrant. Your character will become fragrant. And that fragrance of your character will stay for eternal time. So why didn't you purchase? Why didn't you take a copy of this incense? Right? Yes, फार्ष्ट and then give a befitting reply we need to tolerate the so many people so many people so many words and we need to give a befitting reply we, we, there is no there is no need to you know even if you know this is not artificial just like nityananda prabhu is knocking the doors of the people and when the people are opening the door they are not able to see who is knocking Nityananda Prabhu is on the ground, giving them prostrate obeisances and begging that please chant the name of Gauranga, please chant Hare Krishna. Now this is not artificial humility. Nityananda Prabhu was demonstrating. Nityananda Prabhu was genuinely feeling the compassion for the fallen conditioned soul and was requesting them to chant the holy name. But that kind of compassion is not there in our heart. right now or don't know when that kind of compassion will come to us but we give a gentle behavior sometimes people come and speak nonsense then we give accordingly a befitting reply okay in order to make them understand that this is not something nonsense so and if that time we are saying okay thank you for your words these are not these are not artificial these are these are gentle behaviors these are good conducts of behaviors even if we are getting a negative behavior from others and this will be this we are demonstrating artificially yes to the when the compassion in our heart is less then you will feel that kind of behavior to be artificial but when you have the genuine concern for the people that just see this person does not know anything simply speaking nonsense and does not want to hear okay thank you sir what can be done so if you have the compassion then your telling of thank you or you are greeting him nicely is an act of compassion is an act of humility is not artificial but one who is not mature enough 
one whose heart is not filled with that much compassion for him, that is artificial. But even if that is artificial, act in the beginning in that way. And that's what was Prabhupada's instruction. That one devotee, so that devotee, that, that person, that newcomer told that I did not feel to bow down before you. So then Prabhupada told that first you bow down, then you will feel. So that means in the initial, in the initial times, our compassion, our humility will not be that much. But if we act, then over a period of time, it will be manifested and we will realize the power of our action. Understood? A last person type of money, tick 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 by preaching, by serving, when you will become mature and your heart will be filled with compassion of the for the people, then your behaviors will be genuine act of humility and compassion. Okay? Okay, Prabhu. Thank you. Yes, Mataji. Bolo, Minachi Mataji. Hare Krishna, Prabhuji. Actually, I got my answer, though my question was if uh, sometimes Prabhuji, some decent people uh, do chanting in front of devotees to show humility. Of course, this is an artificial humility. So my question is, uh, how much useful this humility in spiritual ambience? I'm Mustafallam now. Sometimes some decent people, you know, Decent. Yes, yes. You are audible. Yes. Decent people do chanting in front of uh, devotees. You know, and this is uh, actually this uh, uh, humanity. Achha, you, are saying, you, you, you are saying in a sarcastic way. Yes, yes. Yes, Prabhuji. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Like, like, like that way. Yes. So how yeah. much useful this... Uh, 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 this type of uh, chanting or this type of humility or something you can say in it. So is is this useful? Yes. Our... Yes. This is called Nama Bhas. You see, this is the power of Krishna consciousness. When people see us, they say, Hare Krishna. We say, yes. Hare Krishna. So just your darshan with tilak, kanthimala, sari or dhoti kurta or with Bhagavad Gita is reminding them Krishna. They are chanting the holy name, Hare Krishna. Even if they're chanting it jokingly, that chanting in joking manner is destroying the sinful reactions in their life. This is called Nam Abhas. And if I am be, if I am becoming the cause of their nama vas, then all glories. Therefore, you know, we should always decorate ourselves in a devotional way in order to make ourselves Krishna conscious and in order to help others to become Krishna conscious. And we should not get angry. We should also say Hare Krishna, very good. We should not get agitated. We should not get disturbed. See, basically, basically we'll have to become mature. If we'll have to, if we sincerely practice bhakti, then automatically we will become slowly, slowly mature. We'll not become disturbed. Rather, our heart will fill with compassion. But initially, our heart is filled with passion. Therefore, you know, we, we become the Khachi Moja Vatas, okay? <laughs> but but um, I have seen 
in the life of great souls. Perhaps you have heard the name of His Holiness Jayapataka Swami. So His Holiness Jayapataka Swami Guru Maharaj, when he was a sannyasi and he was in the beginning days of Sridhar Mayapur construction, he, he went to Krishnanagar and there people, some people beat him. Next day again Guru Maharaj went to that person and people were taken aback that yesterday we beat that person because that time this due to this communist government rule they propagated that these you know these iskon people they are the cia agent you know they have come here in the name of dharma they want to rule over us just like east india companies came therefore the general people they used to see devotees in a very you know criminal you know criminal viewpoint so next day when Guru Maharaj went there and uh, begged for services, begged, you know, uh, what do you call, uh, he went there for purchasing something. So then these persons, all these people became completely astonished. And yesterday we beat this person, again this person have come. So then Guru Maharaj simply, you know, uh, begged forgiveness that, you know, in Bengali language, that if some my if if any behavior of mine you know, disturbed you and uh, if hurt you, please forgive me. But please, you know, I have come to build the temple for Krishna. Can you please help me? By such kind of behavior, they got completely melted. This is a great means the great personalities who are the real devotees of the Lord. Who are the mature devotees of the Lord, Madhyam Adhikari or Uttam Adhikari devotees? They had the they have the compassion, genuine compassion for people in their heart. They can they can transform the situation of uh, the hostile situation. You know, they can transform the hostile situation in a situation of giving mercy. So therefore, you know, we don't get disturbed by such kind of, you know, attitude. Hare Krishna, Prabhuji. Hare Krishna. So I think we should end here. Sure, okay. Bhagavad Gita ki jai. Srila Prabhupada ki jai. Samaveto Bhakta Vrinda ki jai. Gaur Premanande Hari Hari Bo. Thank you all very much for your sincere hearing and tolerating me. If you have still any question, please feel free to ask. So we will discuss these qualities on the upcoming days on this 18 items of knowledge. So please let me know how did you feel about today's discussion. And if you have any question, you can frankly ask me in WhatsApp. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna.